Hashi Galek, <laughs> which is about the only verbiage that I feel comfortable saying in the Tibetan language. And it means greeting and welcome and welcome. And I'm so, so glad that you're all here. Um, I am Willow Leanders, for those of you who don't know me. And a couple of years ago, I traveled to the island of Kauai, where a very close friend of mine lives. I was in deep grief after losing both of my parents and an important teacher and several friends, and I was not doing well. I was quite ill and in a lot of distress. And a friend that lives on the island has been studying Tibetan medicine for many years, working with several different Tibetan physicians. And she said, Willow, you need to come to Kauai now because Dr. Yantin will be here and you need to work with a Tibetan physician. And she was absolutely correct. Two years ago in May, I met Dr. Jeffrey Yantin. I worked with him and several other healers and it completely turned my life around. For those of you who do know me uh, and remember the, at the time before I saw Dr. Yeltsin when I experienced such deep grief and health issues that went along with that grief, deep grief, I feel like I'm not the same person. The, sh the, the body looks the same, so if you recognize me from before, you'll still recognize me now. As I say, you meet a six-foot-tall, one-legged woman named Willow, you remember. <laughs> 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 uh, but other than the body, the, the, the mind and the heart are healed and healing and finding more and more space for compassion. So my good dear friend, Dr. Jaffa Yankin, also known as Amchi La, Amchi, I learned on this trip is a Mongolian word for physician, and La is a, a, is a term of respect. So if you hear me calling a good doctor Amchi La, it's a, it, he is my respected physician and friend. Um, and tonight he's going to share with us about his medicine. Uh, often we hear of compassion in Western medicine. Tibetan medicine sees compassion as medicine, compassion as remedy. So we'll learn more this evening from Dr. Yankin about compassion as medicine. And we, we definitely want this to be uh, a dialogue, so if you have questions along the way, please feel free to ask those. Uh, we can make it a conversation. And again, I'm so very grateful and joyful that you're all here. Uh, good evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so before I start, I want to offer a small prayer. Uh, this is about the compassion. So, <coughs> first I'll offer. Hello, do you hear me? That's good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, my voice is very low, so please feel free to tell me if you're not hearing well. Okay. 
all friends. Mm -hmm. And that really makes him more compassionate. So if you have to practice compassion, you know, you really don't have to go to Himalaya. <laughs> you can practice every day, you know, treating everyone the same as your old friend. <clears throat> uh, so this is his holiness message on compassion. And for me, like, you know, uh, <sighs> yes, when I came to learn Tibetan medicine, being a Tibetan physician, and if you want to be a good physician, you have a six qualities. So the first one is intelligent, you know, so being a physician. And then second thing is uh, <coughs> diligent. And then third one is morality. And then the fourth one is compassion. And then I have to check, you know, okay, my memory is becoming a little big. Yeah, then skillful. And then, you know, commitment. The sixth one is commitment. So out of these six qualities, intelligent, compassion, skillful, commitment, diligent, and moral values. The most important thing is compassion. So how like <coughs> this compassion we are working? Again, someone who came yesterday, I told you know how we look at the patients. So normally whoever is coming to see the physician, seeing that that is also a same human being like you, not looking down. And compassion, some people invest in that is like simple, simple, simple. simple. sympathy. Simple. Oh, simple. Simple. Yeah. So we are not looking other as, uh, you know, in a sympathy or as a pity, but seeing other as uh, more important or precious. So suppose, like I say, you know, whatever I am today because of you because of others. So like that, you know, when you see the other as a precious or important, you are not looking down to someone who comes to seek your help. So this is like, you know, uh, compassion is not looking. Not, not sympathy, exactly. not pity. Yeah. But equal. Equal and see more valuable. So I always tell, you know, <clears throat> whatever I am is because of others, you know. So therefore, without others, we can't do anything. So, you know, if you want to do something, if you don't have anything to offer, you can't do it, anything. Therefore, without others, and in our karmic also, we are dependent on each other. So like that. <laughs> Anyone has a did you are, you, are you understanding sympathy and compassion? The, the difference between feeling sympathy for someone and feeling compassion? Yeah, because you know, many people see one time I talked about compassion, you know, and someone said it's like having a sympathy, so I just want to make it clear. If someone empathy. never empathy. 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 That's, a, that's, okay. that's an equal point. Yeah, or affectionate. Anyway. <clears throat> so anyway, this point, you know. So whenever we are seeing anyone with a compassion, it doesn't mean that other is in a poor in a poorer side or in a poorer condition, but seeing they are as the same, as equal. First important. And then, you know, second important thing is how to see that. According to Tibetan medicine, normally we see the problem into 84,000 afflictions. The disease, if you want to make it elaborate, we say that there are 84,000 mental afflictions. We don't have a time to go so deep. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So I'll make it a little shorter. That can be condensed into 404 disorders. <laughs> <laughs> and that 404 disorder can be, you know, make into four divisions. So the first one, 101 disorder, is called karmic. What? Is karmic? Karmic? karmic. Yeah, due to karma. Karmic. So many problems, you know, if you see, when you go to doctor, you know, uh, someone who's very rich, or, you know, actually their, their problem can be cured, they should not die. Because they have money to, you know, nowadays you can get everything to buy. So, you can hire or you can go to the best store and get treatment, but then, the karma, due to karma, when the time comes, how rich you are or how young you are, there's no age poor, there's no rich and poor, we die. Similarly, there are many, many problems comes with the karma. And due to karma, you know, and we suffer a lot. So there are many diseases, according to Tibetan doctor, can diagnose and, you know, treat with karma also. So the karmic disease, like sometimes we give the example like a tuberculosis disease, you know, or many other diseases come in a different forms. So I'll just give you one example. I have one of my colleagues, you know, suffering from, I mean, uh, part of fourth stage of tuberculosis, and he's taking the uh, last stage of medicine. And then, you know, uh, whatever the treatment he is taking, he is not getting benefited. So then, you know, uh, he came to me and, you know, he asked, I'm taking this and, you know, I'm still feeling great. He's very skinny. And then when I checked, I found that, you know, it is related to, to karma because he is taking his medicine regularly, he is taking his diet, very well and his lifestyle. And then I told, why don't you try prostration? So there are different ways to overcome your karma. Some just doing by chanting, some offering the pujas, rituals. Is it okay? Rituals? Yeah. Puja or rituals? Rituals. Ritual. The term puja yeah. means ritual. Yeah. You know, so we offer like that. Some prostration, you know, we have in a Buddhist, uh, Tibetan Buddhist, we have a prostration. And if you see some real circumambulations, so there are different ways to overcome karmic disorders. And then I just suggested, why don't you do the prostration? Normally, prostration, when you do, if someone is weak, we don't suggest too much, because it's quite, you have to stretch all your body. <clears throat> and when you do like 108, normally you do 108, 3 is minimum, some do 7, some do 21, some do 50, and some do 108. So it's quite strenuous, quite strenuous you know, but for his health, <clears throat> since he's very weak, uh, in a beginning he had a doubt whether he can do it or not, then he started doing it. After doing that prostration, uh, after a week, he started get, uh, getting better with his appetizer. He started eating better. And then slowly, his health started progressing. And then what he does, you know, longer he did it, he completely recovered from the process, even though he's taking the medication. So sometimes, to collaborate, you know, uh, with spirituality is very important to overcome our diseases. So anyway, so there are 101 disorder which is called karmic disorder. And this is one of the examples how when you go to see a doctor, they may tell you sometimes do this and do that. And then sometimes they may not tell you there is a karmic disorder, but you know, they can feel that and you know and they help people in a different ways. 
So this is how I, I give you one example how we <coughs> can have uh, overcome the karmic disorder. And then like I had many cancer people coming to me in Bangalore. <coughs> and sometimes, you know, uh, I mean people sometimes, most of them who come to me, they went to all the specialists, oncologists, you know, uh, and whatever necessary treatment they have taken, like chemo and radiation. And then after doing that, you know, uh, when Western doctor, they said, okay, now this is the last stage, and we have done everything, and there is no further treatment, and then they come to us and come to me. So again, like you know, when we look at it, we don't see only as a physical problem. We don't look at only the cancer, and then we see in a very broader way. So one of them is karmic disorder. The second one is related with the spirit. Yes, spirit. And then the lifestyle. And then the diet. So, you know, when we see the patient, we see in a very holistic way. And then again, we give the treatment. And then sometimes we use astrological chart to see how, you know, they are going to uh, overcome their yeah, diseases. So then, many of them who are supposed to die within three months, for six months, still living for three years and six years. So like that, you know, so this is how uh, we are helping with the karmic disorder. And then the second one, you know, with us is called 101 disorder due to spirit. Uh, here I want to share what, one example with my teacher. My teacher, Dr. Taukawa Rinpoche, he visited Boulder, Colorado, maybe in the 80s or you know, 70s. Uh, one of the scientists was diagnosed with a cancer again. And then he came to, that time I don't think we have all that treatment like now what we have. But then when he came to learn that uh, the Tibetan physician has come, he came to see uh, my teacher. And then my teacher diagnosed him and then he asked, did you pick up any stone or anything from the hills, from the mountain? And he could not remember. He said, I could not remember but I can think and I can check. Then when he went back, he found one blue stone, like a torch. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, he, he told my teacher, yes, he picked up this from the hill. And then my teacher told, can you bring this back to the same place where you picked it up? Because your problem is due to spirit. And then he went back to the same hill and kept that stone to the same place. And he was cured. And not only just he was cured, he became our, our great supporter. For our institute. So, like that, you know, there are many problems which is not necessarily related to our physical, but there are many others, you know, where we get our problems. And then the third uh, disorder is called, we normally call it as, uh, uh, what do you call it? Ah, the word I'm uh, Small things like, you know, suppose I tell you, if I come to USA now, the weather is very cold compared to Bangalore. Bangalore is very hot. And then coming here, you know, if I behave like what you are behaving, like, you know, putting the heat forth and all, I immediately get problem because of the weather, because of the diet, you know. So, Due to that, the disease which I get, we normally, go, traditionally, we don't go to the doctor. Or even if you go to the doctor, we don't give the medication and treatment immediately. We try to help seeing that disease, seeing that cause, trying to help with changing their lifestyle and diet. So this, uh, we have a 100, 
one disorder. And then the final one is based on three humors, three elements. In our culture, we call it Lung, Tripa, and Pekin. And in English, we translate it roughly as a wind, bile, and flag. And which someone who are very familiar with Ayurveda, they call it water, fika, and kapha. <coughs> So this, again, we have 101 disorder. And so for this, we have a two causes why these three get disturbed. The first cause is, you know, we call it as an immediate cause. The immediate cause is, first is due to diet. Very, very important, you know. So again, here, everyone likes coffee. <coughs> Everyone likes salad. <laughs> you think that you know those are really helping you to be stronger and you are yeah healthier you know, eating salads. You know. And according to the parent physician, you know uh, those are not too healthy. So coffee normally you know disturb your systems according to us. So anyone who goes to see the parent doctor normally we tell don't drink coffee. If you really want to drink, don't drink strong, you know, like it weak. You know. So like that. And then uh, second thing, like as I told you about salad, you know, again, for us, eating the salad is like feeding the grass to the animals. <laughs> I know there are those of uh, enzymes. Uh, I mean, definitely, you know. But anything excess is not good. You know, so, uh, but traditionally we have, uh, yeah, we have a culture to, especially in a night, to eat something warm, something cold. So we, in our culture, we hardly have anyone who is suffering from insomnia. Our problem is sleeping excess. <laughs> so we tell that you know, if you sleep too much, you become like a pig. You know. Whereas if you go to West, all the problems, you know, are related with insomnia. I know it is due to stress, you know, I know our lifestyle, or, I mean, you know, we, are, we have a very busy life. But still, somewhere for me, like, you know, our head eating habit, our diet, eating too much of salad, you know, is also affecting our system, because when you eat, too much of salad, it is very really cooling. And it takes lots of time to get digested. And then, especially if you eat in the night, that makes, uh, that aggravates the wind energy, the lung, the vayu, water. And that makes restless. And then we don't get uh, good sleep. So I always suggest um, whoever I see, you know, if possible, don't eat too much of salad. If you really like to eat and want to eat, eat during the lunch time. So lunch time, our body has a pitta constitution, the bile constitution, the fire uh, energy, and which help us to digest better. So anyway, so like that, you know, then second thing is eating all the time, you know. So here, many of people, if I tell them to cook, they say, I don't have a time. <laughs> and then, if you think why you are working, you know, if you don't have a time to cook and take care of yourself, why you are making money, you know, why you are working, actually. And then, you know, if you still try to work too much, and how much you earn, finally, all the money goes to the doctor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, for me, you know, if you are very intelligent, you know, to keep that balance, you know. Uh, anyway, so the first cause is diet. And the second immediate cause is lifestyle. <clears throat> Again, we have a time to, you know, uh, go to gym or try to go to hiking. But again, if you tell, do some meditation or something, sometimes we don't have a time. 
if it takes a little time for yourself, you know, to think what is going on in your life, you know, we don't have a time, you know, we have a time for checking on the internet, we have a time for our mobile, you know, but we don't have time for ourselves, you know, and then nowadays our work is also, sometimes we don't sleep in the night, we work throughout the night. So all those things actually are not healthy. But again, professionally, if you are like a nurse or something like that, then you have a different shift. That's a different. But actually, according to us, eating on the time, sleeping on the time, doing daytime, you know, what you have to do, do nighttime, is sleeping, only sleeping if you sleep. Those are very, very important to have a better lifestyle. These are very simple things, you know. Sometimes we don't think those are important, but now see, Bengal is a big IT city, and most of the people over there, they work in the night, according to USA timing. <clears throat> and then they don't get too much exposed to the sun. And then they work too much on the computer. So all the people who are working in IT, when they come to me, they are completely like you know, stressed out. All their body are you know squeezed because they don't get the vitamin D. They don't get the sun. They sleep during the daytime. They work in the night, and then in the night they put the air condition. So like you know, the body doesn't get enough. Also, and then the job itself is very stressful. So, anyway, <laughs> so like that, you know, so lifestyle is uh, very, very important. And then the third cause is, the immediate cause is system. <clears throat> uh, according to us, according to our like, medicine, you know, we have to eat our food according to the changes of the weather or seasons. So during the winter, you know, summer, spring and autumn, you know, very, very important. And then along with that, you know, um, our body, our energy also changes. So now, I mean, nowadays it's very difficult, you know, see when I came to USA recently, uh, in Washington DC, it is like a winter. So people are really tired with very long winter, <coughs> still raining, still dark, you know. Uh, but if possible, we have to, you know, eat and behave according to changes of the weather. So like some, it is hot sometime, you know, and putting on too hot is not good, or eating food which are very rich, very like, you know, uh, fatty are not so good, you know, like that. So anyway, according to the seasonal, we have to change our lifestyle and diet. So that help us not to, you know, to overcome the system disorders. And then the fourth one is spirit. <coughs> the cause, you know. Uh, there are different uh, causes of spirit. As I give you one example. Second thing, again, I can give you uh, when I was when I first went to Dharamshala, I to study bad medicine, one of my again colleague, he was suffering, I think again a stupid process, I'm not so sure. And he was very restless. And he says, I have too much pain in my heart, in my mind, which I, you can't see me. And then he was not sleeping. And he wanted to, he said, I want to die because my problem is inside, not physical. And then we checked with his regular doctor and we checked what medication he's taking and the doctor said we are giving the minimum dosage because his physical is very weak. And then he became so severe, so serious, finally what we did is we took him to the Lama. And then normally he don't believe in spirituality even though he's a Tibetan. And then as soon as he reached the Lama, and he just called the feet of Lama and he said, please save my life. You know, these people don't understand my problems. So then the Lama you know, just 
touch his head and pet it and said, don't worry. And then uh, the Lama asked, what happened? Then he went for his holiday. He went for holiday to see his family. He just came back from the holiday. And he said while coming back from his home, normally th there was one tree under which he used to stay with his friend. And when he was coming back, a tree has fallen down. And he had a feeling that, you know, next time when I come, where can I meet my friends? You know, he had that, losing that, having a little grief or, you know, like that. So anyway, that was only he had in mind. And then he came to Darshan. And then the Lama immediately said, you know, oh, the problem here is spirit. The spirit which lives under the tree, you know, has no place. So then when he was coming, you know, he, I mean, that spirit got attacked to him and his energy was low at that time. And then the Lama suggested that, you know, we should send someone or, you know, make some offering rituals at, at the place. So then we, you know, immediately sent someone to do some rituals there. And then he was cured immediately. Not only just cured from there, you know, from that illness, he became a very spiritual lady. So before, like, you know, when he was fine, when we used to go to the monastery for certain ambulation, he always made fun, why you are wasting your time. Then after that, when he got cured, he started doing chanting, and as soon as our office hour, he immediately goes to the monastery for the start of ambulation and completely changed. So like that, you know, so these are three, like four immediate causes which disturb our three elements, wheat, bile, and fat. And then we have our three distant causes. Then three uh, distant causes, we call it as the uh, three mental poisons. So the first one is called desire, the attachment. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, we give the example like a bird. You know, so I don't know if the bird has uh, too much desire or not, <laughs> but if you, we give you know, the example like a bird. And this, again, I give sometimes example like that in my I mean, my old office is surrounded by shops. Uh, now I moved to new office, you know, uh, but my old center is surrounded by uh, the shop where you buy the clothes. Very fancy, modern also. So many of my patients come to see me and when they have to wait for the consultation <laughs> and they are watching all the beautiful things. <laughs> And then, you know, their attachment or their desire became so strong and they ended up buying that stuff. And then after the consultation, they go home very happily. <laughs> and when you reach home, then you check what you bought it. And then, you know, when their desire goes, then they, oh, I paid too much. <laughs> for the color which I thought. This is not the same color which I thought. Everything, every negative is coming. And then sometimes, you know, if your partner or husband and wife are not so good, if the wife bought something, husband says, why you bought it? You already have the same one. <laughs> All that anger, the aggressive, the hatred is aggravating. So due to that attachment and desire, the wind is aggravating in our physical level. So the desire and attachment is in the mind. But you know, through that physically we are getting disturbed in our wind. Then we become restless. You don't have a, a control over your desire to buy that. You know, you immediately graduate and whatever they say you buy it, you know. Because your desire or your attachment is so strong. And then, you know, due to anger or due to hatred, you know, due to aggressive, the bile that hit in your body is aggressive. 
then you can see that your eyes is becoming very red, you know, your body is becoming you know, very strong, you know. So that is activating the the fire, the heat, the fire in the body. So that is how you know we are getting like headache, migraine, you know, all those things. Right? And then if you see the third one, we call it as a delusion or cloudy minded. So that is like, you know, making our mind not to see the clarity. If your mind is clarity, or if you see so many beautiful, oh yeah, these are beautiful, no doubt. But I already have it, you know. Oh yeah, this is there, but similar to that, I have it, you know. Oh, this is okay. I know I came to see the doctor, not to buy that. But, you know, sometimes our desire and this become very strong. We don't have a control. We just grab it, we do it. So, this third one is called delusion. Yeah. And due to the delusion, then in our body, the flame energy is activated. And most of the time, you know, the, due to delusion, our mind is confused. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know to take the right decision. And then our mind is always very slow in taking the decision. And then not wanting to do Anything. So anyway, so these are the four, three distant causes. So how, like you know, uh, our problem is not necessarily related to physical, and it also goes deeper to our mind. And then the ultimate cause is ignorance. Uh, this is a little. Uh, complicated translation, ignorance, in our text. Dagme Dhamma Dagmepa. That means I which is not existing. But not knowing that I is not existing, you know. See, I said I'm Dhobi Jampa, you know. Or oh, this is my body, this is my center. But in reality, the I which is not existing, if you make my body into parts, which is Jampa, you know. I mean, so these are not easy to discuss this here, but actually, you know, our life is impermanent. Our life, our body is made of many, many small cells, you know. And then, yeah, if you really go to see where I is, uh, it's very difficult to find. But then, every problem in this world is created by I. So we call it as a self-grasping. That means, you know, I'm important, you know, like, oh, I want this, I want that, you know. And I think in a ways also, you know, I found sometimes we are more I than we, you know. Even like, suppose if you go to a doctor, you know, in India, when one is sick, everyone comes and you know, in a family, and everyone wanted to know. So they shared everything, you know. And in a way, you know, I found, you know, even between husband and wife, parents and children, you know, teachers and students, we have too much of privacy. So sometimes, you know, that is making very lonely. Uh, one of my visit to Germany, you know, uh, in a very big thing, uh, when I first went, all the people in Germany are really looking very strong physically. So I thought, oh, these people don't have any suffering, any sickness. If you look at physical, and they are very well dressed. Uh, but then when you talk, when you check their parts, you know, and then when I start asking some questions which are related to emotion, then, you know, they are very gentle. Yeah. And then, you know, they started crying. And then they said, yes, I have this problem, I have that problem, I can't talk this, you know, I can't share this. Because you have so many privacy. And that is making very lonely. And that, you know, that creates 
many problems. Anyway, so <clears throat> this is not too related, but important thing is, you know, uh, not to keep too important to only I. You know, as I told you in the very beginning, we all are dependent on others. You know, without others, you know, we can't do anything. Therefore, seeing others as important, seeing others' life as a precious, is a very very important. So this is how we began to see the patients. Then after that, you know, <clears throat> now important thing is, again, a uh, little bit I'll go with uh, four natural uh, sufferings. First one is getting birth. Normally when someone is conceived, you know, we are very happy. But then, you know, we never try to see what is going on with the with the fetus, you know. Actually, you know, like what mother is eating, what mother is thinking affects the fetus. So the fetus is feeling very dark, congested, imprisoned like that. But we never realize how the suffering is. So suffering starts very beginning from the fetus. <clears throat> and then as soon as the baby is born, you know, how they cry. Even though we try to wash our hand and hold it, but still for them it is falling on the throne, like throwing up the throne. Yeah, like that. And they feel even though we, you know, soft, but they're so gentle. And then nowadays, as soon as the child is born, we have to take them to the pediatrician mm -hmm. to see. Like that. So anyway, these are all natural suffering. First one is birth, getting birth. And then yeah, getting birth. Yeah. And then the second one is sickness, illness. Uh, I always tell people, you know, accept the sickness, accept the illness, you know. Uh, don't try to run away from your disease. Suppose if I have a migraine, if I think, oh, migraine is very painful, you know, and if I try not to accept that I have a migraine, my migraine becomes much more worse. If I think that, oh, migraine is one of the disease, same like any other fever, arthritis, you know, anything, automatically the migraine becomes much lighter. And then you can take a treatment, take, you know, change your diet, lifestyle, and you can overcome your sickness very easily. But we don't realize that sickness is part of our system. We always try to run away. So most of the Western people, you know, in their bag, if you check, earlier they used to take more makeup. Nowadays, more than makeup, you take more medicines. If you have a headache, you just take on pain killer, if you have fever, you take something, if you have pain, something, so many medicine, just to, you know, to run away from the disease. <coughs> so actually I tell many of my patients, you know, don't run away. The same like a migraine, if I migraine, what did I eat? What is making me the migraine? Am I thinking, you know, too much? Am I have too much of stress? Am I sleeping well? You know, am I behaving well to the system changes. All those we have to be analyze, we can find the cause. And then according to that, if we change our diet, lifestyle, emotion, it's much easier to overcome the sickness. So not running away from the sickness, accept that and analyze what caused the sickness including uh, diabetes, arthritis, cancer, AIDS, anything, you know. And when we accept, it's much easier to, to heal. Here I want to give you one simple example. Uh, last two years back, His Holiness the Dalai Lama went for his cold blood uh, surgery. <coughs> and then the doctor thought it, it might take one, two hours is a minor surgery and then it took three four hours or more than that and then you know like his one is uh, 
schedules are very busy, so they thought it will take longer time to recover. But then His Holiness got uh, recovered very immediately. So then uh, the doctors, they thought, even though he is in 70, you know, uh, uh, really old, but then they told you are very young patients, like a young children. He immediately got, and his holiness immediately got cured or recovered. So his holiness uh, shared that with us in Bangalore when he visited. He said that while going through that, he just you know took it so lightly, not taking, not thinking that he's going through the surgery. He just said that he was just smiling, just laughing. And then that helped him to heal very fast. So like that, if you accept your disease, and you know, if you just do naturally, it's very easy to overcome or get cured. And then the third one is, you know, um, yeah, many in West, you know, that doesn't like it, is uh, what you call it, getting aging. Again, this is a natural process. <coughs> when we are born, you know, we are small and gradually getting older. Older is actually a natural process. And many of my patients who come to India, I have a couple of claims. So one claim I have is anterior claim, not to get you know wrinkles or not to get old aging. And then I have other cream, which is called white lotus cream, to make, you know, uh, to make uh, fair, fair complexion, fair complexion. Yeah, fair complexion. You know. So this is made by Mensikam, the Tibetan Medical and Astrological Institute from Dharamshala. So my patients from West, they always like to buy the anterior cream. <laughs> And my patients from India, they always like to buy the fairness cream. <laughs> For them, you know, more than the wrinkle, they want to become more fairness, which is more pretty. And from Western, my patients, they're already fair, you know, they don't want to get aging and they don't want to listen to their age. <laughs> um, and again, I share this, uh, again, you know, uh, experience with many of my talks, like uh, with my mother, I always tell her, you know, mom, now, you know, don't do this, don't do that, because you are already old, see, your, see yourself, you know, your wrinkles. And she always says, you know, I'm so fortunate that I live so long to have so many wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just opposite, you know, she's very, like, she's proud of having that wrinkles so that she was fortunate to live so long like that you know so anyway i'm just trying to help you you know how to accept that natural process and then the last one is death or dying <coughs> again in a way many people are not interested you know uh, to know about dying or death you know again in our culture uh, every year we have uh, the book of death, we read in our house, we invite the lamas to read that. So that, you know, at least when I die, I have, you know, uh, I have uh, experience of listening to that. So that is a gui gu guiding or to when you die. You know. So like that, so we practice the death every year. We learn and we talk, you know, and every day we see life as impermanence. And then that helps us to, you know, when the real death comes, it's very easy to face. Otherwise, you know, we all know, we all are not going to be here for permanent. But then again, you know, in our mind, we think that we are going to live permanent, you know, we assume, you know, which is not reality, which is not practical. So when that comes, people are really scared, you know. Uh, but in our tradition, when aging comes or when death comes, they become more common. And then they recall all their practice. If they're doing any spiritual practice, they try to recall and then, you know, overcome. So many of lamas who are very good spiritual practitioners, you know, 
they have a right to die when they want. They have such a good practice. So there are many lamas, when they die, they stay in a meditation. So last, I think the last year or the year before, one of our great master in Moon God, after his death, he stayed in a meditation for 27 days. Yeah, his mind left the body, but still, you know, uh, it's just like, like, like they are, like you are alive, you know. So they have such a good practice, and you know, they can just leave their body like a guest house. Yeah. Anyway, so these are the natural causes in our life. If we know all those things, if we accept, then life becomes very easy. So if you have a headache or any pain, okay, don't worry. This is, you know, one of the yeah, problem, one of my body system, but I can still help it. You know, what can I do like that? And then, yeah, if you are, if your age or wrinkle is coming, try to be more happy. And then, yeah, I mean, uh, dying also is not necessary that, you know, all will die first. It's not necessary. There's no age bar. Anyone can die anytime. So if we think that, you know, yesterday, yeah, during our Mother's Day, Rilo has said, yes, you know, yesterday was our dream. Tomorrow is our hope, our vision, and today is our real day, you know. So every day makes us, you know, special, auspicious, you know, and then thinking that life is very precious, you know, because we say that human life is, you know, very special from other beings because we have that mind to think, brain to think, you know. So if you use in a positive, we can do so many good things for this world, for this universe, which we can benefit for the environment, you know. But at the same time, our mind can do so many destructive also. So why not instead of thinking negative, you know, think positive? Anyway. Then, do you have any questions? I understand from Willow that and we all have to bring our urine. Yes. Uh, can you tell me how you learned and what can you, what what do you know from looking at it and smelling it and <laughs> and then and then about can you talk about the herbs too? I understand you yes. give herbs depending on uh, these two I'll talk with a letter. Uh, I uh, like these two are not too related to our topic, which are now, you know, see, um, right now our topic is on compassion and you know, as a remedy. So I'm talking all the sufferings, all the pains, and how it is coming. And then, you know, how the doctor is, the Tibetan physician is trying to help with that compassion. You know? yeah. So I'll definitely tell you once we do this session. You know? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? When you're in the U.S., let's say, do you talk about karma to people? Are they accepting? I mean, uh, uh, see, even in India, we don't talk too much about karma unless some patient they ask. Sometimes they ask, like, you know, going to all the doctors, doing their best, eating the best food, doing the best lifestyle, then going to the best doctor, you know, taking all the treatment, sometimes they, they really come to the point, you know, they get completely, I don't know, you know, exhausted or... Discouraged? Yeah, discouraged, they're losing their hope. Then they said, what is this? Then we sometimes, you know, we tell, you know, yes, this is related to cutting disorder, yeah. Uh, traditionally, in, with the Tibetan people, it is quite more common than others. Yeah, we believe also. Even sometimes we don't have to tell. The patients will tell us, you know, oh, doctor, we are doing this and that, you know, oh, still not getting. Do you think this is a karmic? Can you suggest what can we do like that? You know, they do us. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, we do tell. Yes. Does karma that you talk about, is that just to this incarnation or from previous ones? can be anything. They are different karmas. The karma from the many, many lives. Karma from this life. And karma from, you know, both this, in this life as well as previous. Mm -hmm. 
See, karma is just an action. If you sow good, see, if I have a mango seed, if I put a mango seed, I'll not get the apple. <laughs> so if you're doing good, you should get you know, good. If you're doing bad, it's action and reaction, you know, like that. Very simple. So karma in Tibetan is called le. Le means action. So, you know, in Sanskrit, it is called a karma. So sometimes when we think the karma, you know, something very illusion, you know, people have a very illusion meaning or understanding, but very simple. So a uh, couple of my patients, I tell them to do the analytical meditation. Just watch your thought, what you are thinking. Just, you know, watch your speech, what you are saying. And just watch your action, what you are doing. All that comes from this thing. There's no beyond that, you know. Many things, you know, what we are thinking. Sometimes see, we might be doing good, but our intention is not good. Then I gave you the example like yesterday, give you hundred dollars or give you one dollar. More important in your thought than what you are doing. And then the second thing is to the physical, helping others, you know. Then if you can't do that physically or materialistic, then you can do it through your speech. And then, you know, many things we can help by guiding others like that, you know, like that. Anyway, so those are how, you know, related. So karma is just action. So from today, everyone I hope will be, you know. <laughs> anyway, so now, uh, that compassion, when the doctor comes, you know, uh, we talked yesterday a little bit, you know, first seeing the suffering of the, so being a doctor, you know, when I uh, practice my compassion, first see the suffering of the patients, you know, and that is very important, like preliminary, without seeing their suffering, if I think uh, the patient is just coming to see me, if I, if I don't have that feeling of, you know, of realizing the pain which the patient is going through, then I can't help them with the compassion. Anyone who's coming, maybe coming with a cancer or coming with just a headache, same problems, you know, same you think both are suffering in a different way, you know, and both doesn't want that pain, you know, both want to recover from that pain. And then, you know, seeing that, then we have to help practically. So practically that four immeasurable qualities, you know, uh, I'll just go through it. The first one is limitless compassion, and the second one is limitless love, the third one is limitless joy, and then the fourth one is limitless equanimity. Yes. Very important, uh, you know. So this will really help you to see the patients not looking down. Seeing the patient as a very precious, human life, you know, seeing that human, precious human life, same like you and me, you know, who wanted happiness and doesn't want suffering. Yeah. And then, you know, after doing that, you have to dedicate, you know, so like dedicating that, like as I told yesterday, like how he and she is suffering. There are many, many who are suffering. So I'm helping here, but you know, how I'm helping here can be benefited to many others. Like that, you know, those are very, very important. So same like that, even the patients, you know, those who are into the spirituality, you know, uh, or those who understand, you know, they also do like that. When they are taking the medicine, like my mother, you know, most of the old Tibetans, when they are taking to medicine, they pray, you know, they pray for all sentient beings, not only for human beings. Yes, I have problems, sickness, you know, everyone has, in a different form, you know, not necessarily the same, but, you know, this medicine which I'm taking for my pain, my sickness, can be benefited to everyone, like that. It's a very important to have that, you know, and then I also tell that when uh, patients go to see the doctor, see, sometimes doctor wants to do too much, the patients are not open their heart, you know. And then the healing has to be, you know, both sides. So see, many patients who come to me, sometimes they say, doctor, you know, you help me a lot. 
and always tell not only me, you know, you help me a lot to help you. One hand can't do anything, you know, two hands give the sound. Like that, you know, if the doctor is very good, the patient is not, you know, good. If I tell don't do this and that, you know, here they say yes, yes, yes. Soon after you see they're doing the same thing what I told not to do. Then next day they call, you know, I took your medicine, it's not helping, you know. Yes, it's not going to help because, you know, your diet, your life is completely aggravating that your problems, you know. So like that, so here, you know, practicing that four limitless and then dedicating that to all sentient beings. And then, you know, uh, So we have 10 more minutes I can talk. And then there are these things. I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, in terms of the effects on the body, how do you see the relative importance of the actual foods people eat and the attitudes they have toward the foods that they eat? In other words, one can have a very reverential sacred attitude toward a food that might not be so healthy. Yeah, exactly. So which is which has the stronger effect on the body? The the attitude <coughs> you have and the thoughts about the food or the actual food itself? Uh, practically actual foods, you know. Actual like you know. But then see, you know, if you in that condition uh, suppose I mean I'm very fortunate wherever I go uh, whoever is organizing me, they always make a food what I like, hmm. you know. In case, if I'm in a situation where, you know, they don't think that cooking is good, and if I'm treated with three times salad, <laughs> you know, uh, yes, I may, it may not be my, you know, good for me, but, you know, yeah, if I can still think, instead of starving, I'm still better, I have something to eat, you know, I'm fortunate that they're fitting me, you know. So like that, see, there are different ways, depending on the situation, our condition, you know. So always, uh, but if everything is in your hand, then, you know, really like, uh, even the mindful meditation, just is, you don't have to see it in your, you know, what you call it, you don't have to see it in a, uh, yeah, in a, uh, in, a, uh, in a remote place like that while cooking, just enjoying that, you know. Enjoy cooking, what you are using, you know. Just enjoy each and every moment you are doing, then no stress, you know. And then when you eat your food, it's far better, you know. Oh, you really, because you cook with that love, with that mindful, you know, with that joy. And really, like when you sit, ah, you know, enjoy. But if you cook with, you know, oh, I have to go, you know, then that stress, restless, you know, then if you eat, maybe very expensive, maybe organic, you know, maybe imported, I don't know how much it is, uh, you know, benefiting in our, you know, system. So I always tell, you know, uh, how to, yeah, how to enjoy everything we do, including the cooking. Is it okay? Is it okay? Yes. If it's a, a disorder that starts in the womb, how do you as a physician pick that up? Is that through the pulse? Or is it something that you sense or hear? How do you, what, if it's a disorder that starts at birth, yeah. how do you treat it? I see it. How do you <coughs> recognize yeah, yeah. it first? For the children, we don't see it, uh, see their hand. It's, you don't feel it too good. So for the children, you know, till five, six, seven, eight, we see from the ear. Yeah. Uh, yes, so first we see from the ear, then we see the body part, yes. And then, yeah, sometimes, see, yeah, I mean, you know, many things like intuition also. You know, many things, you know. Uh, Every patient, we talk very differently, you know, so like that, it's not we are really planned, you know, it's not like it is recorded. It just comes according to, you know, what you see. So, yeah, but with the children, normally we see their ears. 
like how we see the pulse, we see the years, and then there will be time. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding the difference between karma and spiritual. Yes. And just wondered how you, could you yeah. talk about that? Uh, I think like karma and spirituality are two different things. I don't think like karma you see, I mean, you know, um, karma is what we do. Uh, spirituality you see, you know, uh, now in our medicine, you know, I'll tell you, uh, <clears throat> when you take a treatment or when you try to keep your body healthy, you know, so we say there are two flowers. If you are healthy, there are two flowers. One is long life. When you are healthy, you get long life. The second thing is you are free from disease. So these two are your flowers, keeping your, you know, these three elements into balance. When you keep that wind, bile and flame, you get long life and free from diseases. And then we have a three fruits. Now see, having a long life and free from sickness, and then if you just sleep, again you are same like a pig. <laughs> like, you know, we say that then we are not different from the animals. We are same like the animals. We are not human beings. There is no use for our mind, our brain. Since we have that human life, you know, don't waste that, use that. And then we, when we have that long life and free from disease, we have a three fruits. The first one is prosperity. When you are healthy, when you are free from disease, you can work as much as you want. And U.S. is a very good place. People who want, they have opportunity. In India, suppose I'm a doctor, if I go to work in some other shop, you know, they won't give you the job. Now it is, Bengal is progressing. So, you know, people really like, you know, to get a different job or all those things are very difficult, you know, to have that. Here, like someone who really wants to do, they can do anything. I have, I am known to many doctors, they are doing as a waiter. Something, some, you know, they check the, job for the funds sometimes sometimes they travel too much so they lose their client or something then they say oh since i'm here for three months i just want to make some money again i want to travel but in india those are not possible so anyway i'm just like you know if you're healthy if you're free from disease you can do whatever you want and then if you do you get prosperity if you're very healthy body a long life if you just sleep Maybe you get a stomach, but you don't get any prosperity. <clears throat> and second thing is spiritual spirituality or spiritual practice. See, like, we have such a good life, you know, and um, such a precious life. But if you don't use this in a meaningful way, then again, as I told you, our life is same like the other animals, like a dog, you know, cat horse or pig. So since we have that spiritual, I mean sorry, the human life, the precious life, and then if we try to do some spirituality, and then his holiness, the Dalai Lama says, spirituality doesn't mean that just go and chant or meditate, just being kind. If you're kind to anyone, that's also a spiritual practice. So like that, you know, so, is it okay? Yeah, and then the third fruit is called happiness. So this happiness is not like, you know, sometimes we have a very temporary happiness, like going to the party, you know. If we tell, come for some spiritual practice or some service, many people have so many appointments. Oh, I have to go to my doctor, I have to go shopping, many. If you tell, come for the party, you know, every appointment you can get canceled. <laughs> Be there, you know. So sometimes see, we think that you know, we cause happiness very sh short term, temporarily. Watch a movie, gossiping, we feel very happy. But those are very temporary. And sometimes during that time when we are watching the movie or talking, maybe we are a little bit off 
occupied, and then after that again we have the same suffering. The real happiness, the genuine happiness in our mind. So I always tell my patients, you know, if there is too much of problems, you know, don't take it so serious, you know, don't hold it. Because, you know, see how there's a day and night. Same like that, you know, if there's a problem, it will go, you know. And then when you start accepting, as we told in the beginning, accepting the disease, to just accept that problem as a part of your, you know, process, then, you know, your pain, there is a suffering, but that is not painful and very easy to overcome. But we have so many perceptions in our mind, you know, when we say something bad, we just don't want to face that. We try to run away and that follows like a shadow. It will never leave you, wherever you go. <laughs> yes, same like that, even if we have some, you know, happiness, small, small things when we are, something is happening good or you are doing good with some business or something, overly happy, you know, too much like they show, oh, I'm so happy. I always tell them, you know, don't be too, too much, you know, what you call it? Uh, Attached. Too much, like, you know, uh, too much happy or, you know, again, it is not going to last for permanent. So both this happiness and, you know, the suffering or, you know, won't last, you know, so, like that, you know, if you accept both, you know, with that positive thinking, you know, and accepted it very positively, and then, you know, our lives become very moderate, very balanced. Then any problems, you know, anything happen, you become, you know, you, you don't become more stressed or overly that, then life becomes much more balanced, much more happier. More you are balanced, more you get happiness. More you have imbalance, you get more sickness. So like that, so <clears throat> for me, I mean, uh, see, we use the spirituality to overcome the karma. You know, yes, like, I mean, if see, I mean, now if I have a long life, and if I have a healthy, if I do more spiritual practice, you know, and I'm being kind to helping others, <coughs> Uh, so yesterday we talked about Mother's Day, you know, I talked a little bit how mother was so kind, you know, whatever I am, I completely dedicated to my mother. So, and then, uh, yeah, my mother passed away in 2011, uh, you know, and then I felt that, you know, I couldn't get the opportunity to do so much for her when she was alive. I thought, you know, okay, you know, and whenever I called her as a daughter, she said she's fine. And I never had an opportunity and spent time with her. So then when she passed away, you know, I realized that I wanted to do something. So I started one trust in her name. Uh, in that trust, I have a three, uh, you know, three, three, three aims to help. First one is education. See, in a way, you get a very good education, you know. Uh, in India, to get education is very expensive, you know. So therefore, you know, there are many, many parents who can't educate their children, and I suffered that. I went through that, you know, hardness. So first I thought, you know, I can help any children, you know, who, you know, could not go to get education, whose parents cannot afford to send their children to school. And then my second thing is elderly care. Uh, even though, you know, compared to West, in the East, we have a better, you know, care for our elderly. But now, India is also changing. All the young children, you know, they're educated and they go to the big, big city. And then many old people left, you know, alone and not having, you know, uh, care, good care. So I thought, you know, since I could not do so much service or help, assisting to my mother, if I can help all those old people, you know, who doesn't have a support, if I can do something, you know, so I'll be, it's dedication to my mother. 
And then the third one, uh, I thought, you know, I'll try to promote any like traditional medicine or healings like Tibetan medicine, Ayurveda, Chinese, Homopad. There are many, many Yunani, you know. So because uh, we need that holistic healing uh, in this in, in, during this time. So like that. So. I started uh, a trust in the name of my mother to support that cause. So this is like how I try to dedicate, you know, uh, to my mother, even though she's not here. So I hope, you know, this will help her, you know, sort to be rested in case that, you know, yeah. And then according to us, again the karma, she can be reborn. So even like you know, when someone dies. Suppose my mother died now, 2011, still we offer some prayer and, you know, rituals in her name. So that wherever she is born, she can have a better life. So that was so like, you know, so this dedication which I'm doing can help her to born in a better life. So that she don't have to suffer what she has suffered. Like that. So anyway, that, like, you know, so I think, Spirituality can be in a different way, you know, like meditating and uh, really if you want to do spirituality, then go to the monastery, you know, uh, and then do uh, giving up all our uh, lay people's life and then go to the monastery. So, you know, uh, and then again, nowadays, as I told you, being a kind also is part of, I think is a part of spirituality also. So, uh, yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Yes. Could you expand on the, uh, the influence and role of astrology on both one's physical health and the herbs that you collect? <coughs> how, how would you explain to the Western mind about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a little, you know, I mean, yeah, uh, see, normally we say that, you know, uh, we don't teach to every student, you know, <laughs> there should be three qualities which the student, student shouldn't have that. So the first one we say, if we have a cup, the cup should not be with a hole. If the, <laughs> so if the cup has a hole, if you put the water, it will leak. So don't teach to the student who listen and stand it, you know, <laughs> body here, mind somewhere. <laughs> Second one, we say the cup which is upside down. So if it is upside down, you know, then how much you put, water will spill out. So sometimes people just come as a formality, but not really interested. So don't teach people who are not interested. Third one is uh, the cup is uh, filled with the water, but it's poison. So sometimes, you know, people who has uh, bad motivation, see nowadays the media, and many things can interpret in a different thing, and then our cultural differences. So sometimes people don't understand. Now, as I said, you know, I'm helping the cancer patient. It doesn't mean that I'm specialized in a cancer disease. What I'm saying is, we are helping the cancer patient in a different way, different approach. Not that I am, you know, specialized. So sometimes the media and they, you know, they are very excited to write something and then they really interpret in a different way, you know. So then that can cause misunderstanding between me and the other doctors. So nowadays we are very sensitive. Anyway, yes, uh, First of all, like, you know, the herbs, when you go to collect, we see the auspicious day. You know, before you go, you start with that auspicious day. And then once you collect, you know, uh, and then you dry it, clean that, and then finally, you know, uh, we powder it, and then we come out. Again, during that time, we see the astrological thing, we see the auspicious day, so that all the star, moon, all the elements should you know, energize the herbs. <coughs> and then finally, you know, 
uh, when it is compounded, you know, then we have a blessing. Rituals, you know, so there's a blessing for the herbs. Uh, so again, traditionally, you know, see, Tibet is a huge country and very less population. So traditionally in Tibet, and then there is not too many of doctors and there is not too many lamas everywhere. So someone is dying or something like that, if they have a cognitive disorder, if they have a herbs, Tibetan pills, and they take that as a blessing. Because it is already blessed, it is already made with the auspicious, you know, things. So like that, you know, so herbs is not only just as a medicine, but also as a blessing. So like that, you know, so those of, <coughs> uh, what do you call it, you know, uh, yeah, those of good energy, the, you know, healing energy, you know, the positive energy, and then the blessing. So like that, you know, uh, yeah, we do it. We, we come out or, you know, is it okay? Yeah, so, <coughs> any more questions? Anyway, now I'll make a very short one. So, see, again, you know, uh, even in Tibet, the uh, doctor has a high respect also. As I told you, six quality in the beginning, you know, uh, of the doctor like that. Even when we look at, you know, the, from the patient side, when they look at doctor, you know, see many of them like, you know, they see doctor as the Buddha, and you know, the text, the medicine Buddha, I mean, med medical text which we study, we treated that text as a Buddha's, you know, script. And then the, what we get the teaching or the medicine is like the Buddha's teaching. So people has a very, very high respect. And then, you know, uh, when the doctor is seeing the patients, you know, so these are called six vows, you know. And then we see the patient as a child, how mother cares the, you know, how mother is taking care of their child. Like that, doctor will take care of the patient as their child, not as a patient, you know, as I told you, with that care, with that love. If you think that, you know, your child, you know, then how much you can do, how much sacrifice you can buy them. And then, you know, seeing the nurses, the colleagues who are working in a uh, hospital, so those are like a Dharma friend. You can see as a Dharma friend. And then uh, the patient who comes with, you know, so many like, I mean, pus, blood, you know, something, you know, something is oh, don't bring it, like, I feel like, you know. So you look, you look at the patient as a pet. Suppose if you think this is my dog, you know, it's my pet, then you don't mind kissing and hugging, you know, how much, how dirty is the dog. <laughs> you just, you know, love it, you know. Even if you're getting allergy, you still, you know, so like that, so mm -hmm. see the patient. So these are the six vows, which again is a very part of that, you know, when we talk about the compassion, how our mind, you know, or looking very different, differently at the patients, taking care of them, you know. So I think this is good for this evening. Any more questions? <laughs> and again, I want to do the final dedication prayer. Changjo sim, changjo sim jo rinpo che ma ye banan ke kyo che ke wa. May the precious Buddhichita not yet born arise and grow. May that which is born have not declined, but increase more and more. Thank you so much. Thank so. you so much. <coughs>